Hello, everybody. We are those guys you hate. Welcome to the show that encourages you to be your best self by not being like us. My brother and I hopelessly search for nuance as we wade through wacky segments and crazy conversations. If you can withstand the insanity, you might actually learn something. Tyler, what are you going to be chatting about on this week's show? Ryan, on this week's show, we're going to find humor in a dark situation. Okay. And Haiti. Yeesh. What about you, Ryan? Yeah, it's tough right now, Tyler. On this week's show, is it possible to receive diplomatic immunity when delving into guy code? And is there anything more annoying than a loved one changing their life for the better? Hmm. On this week's Those Guys You Hate. I thought that I had to suffer in silence, Tyler. In terms of what? I'm going to tell you. I'm building up to it Okay. here at the beginning of the show. Um, It turns out that I am not the only one who has been through a deeply traumatic experience. And I know that I'm always doing a gag. You're the more serious one. I'm always a bit more whimsical in a general sense. But this is true. Hopefully it's funny, but also it's very, very true. But before I tell you what it is, why does learning that other people are affected by something make it more manageable for you? Because you know someone out there has gone through the same experience. Humans want to be understood by others. So when you know that the person you're talking to has had the exact same experience as you, you know that when you talk about it, they will fully understand what it is you're saying. And, and I guess when something different happens to you, it is, you almost feel like you're, you're different than everyone and you're out of the human grouping. The idea of somebody saying, hey, not only did that happen to me, but I lived through it. I got stronger from it. It makes you feel like you're less alone. Absolutely. Definitely less alone. And knowing that no matter how bad you feel, this person went through the same thing and look at them. They're doing better. They came out the other side as you said, healthier, better, whatever the case may be. Well, and that's that's the thing. What I'm about to describe to you is a deep trauma, a horrible circumstance that I went through. I was chatting with street producer Lenny the other day, and very casually, he described going through the same thing, and it, it my heart grew three sizes that day. It, it really brightened up my outlook on life, and like, I'm not the only one. I have... I am now talking to somebody who has experienced this, and I want to now reach out to see if other people know what it is that I'm talking about, Tyler. Are you going to keep teasing us, or are you going to tell us what the situation is? I haven't decided. Gotcha. All right, I'll tell you. There is something that maybe all dog owners are familiar with. I have titled it Poop Uke, Tyler. Mm Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with poop puke? When they puke and shit themselves. No. It or is it's poop that looks like. <laughs> puke. I'm here for all of your guesses, mm-hmm. but you haven't hit it yet, but you're sort of slowly making your way into the right place. Uh, when, have you ever had a dog? Have you, no. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. Let's get a dog, Tyler. Agree. Let's get it. Okay. I've been shouting this from the rooftops for years. I'm serious. Let's get a dog. Okay. As long as you're in on helping out and I'm in on helping out, we could do this. But that's neither here nor there or interesting on a podcast. Poop uke is when a dog shits. Then eats it. Eats its own shit. Mm -hmm. And then throws up the shit that it had shitted and now has puked out. It is poop uke. And I used to have a dog named Riley. Shout out, Riley. You're dead. And Riley, while crate trained would poop uke and fill the bottom. I'm not trying to be disgusting. This is how we're starting off the episode. I'm not trying to be disgusting. This is something that I learned. I thought that I was suffering alone. Filled up the bottom of her crate. And here's the thing with poop uke, Tyler. Mm -hmm. It is, you're familiar with poop? 
I am. You familiar with puke? I am. Both not great. Yeah. They're, they're both not great. It's mm-hmm. not what you're looking for. You know, even if it's your own poop or your own puke, it's still pretty, pretty bad. Poop puke is 50 times worse. It's triple distilled, Tyler. It is toxic in a way that you just can't understand. And you are now charged with dealing with it. And in my circumstances, I'm talking a couple of inches thick. It was like a, one of the Great Lakes. Yeah, I, I feel like you don't want to talk about this. We're doing a public service. Ladies here. and gentlemen, I promise you <laughs> this show will get better. It, it I, won't. I, I promise you. How can you, I'm the one who put the show together today. How can you promise that? You have I, no I, idea. I've got two segments. They're pretty good. And it can't, it, it honestly can't get much worse. We'll see, I, th- oh man, I'm spitting mad right now. Okay, Ryan uh, Show. Ryan yeah, yeah, yeah. You open the episode talking about a dog eating its own <laughs> shit. And, and then, then vomiting it up. Poop you, yeah. Tyler. No, I know you said that. There word. is a million dog owners out there right now wagging their tail thinking like, this is, what he's saying is right. Mm-hmm. And I thought I was the only one. Mm-hmm. You're not in on it? Uh, no, I mean, I mean, what do you want me to say? I've never owned a dog. And what is the... What is the the plot? What is the moral to the story? What is the end that we're looking for it here? It sounds like a joke, but I thought that I was the only one who had ever been through something like that. I thought this is not recreatable. This I know that dogs eat their own poop, but when Riley would throw up, it was about a million times more than those two things combined. It's like Captain Planet, mm-hmm. but the reverse side. Yeah. Welcome to the show, everybody. Yeah. I am the poop, and Tyler is the puke, and we are here to have a good time. Why on... do you get to be poop? You want to be the poop? Yeah, I'll take All right. whatever. All right, because I'm the shit, Tyler. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it on the Depression Index. You didn't help me at all there. I did no not. One did I didn't want to. Know what to what do, the depression index is, is, is a machine that I built with my hands and we crank it up to let you know how down we are. Tyler, even though you didn't help me at all, mm-hmm. I am here to see how you're feeling. How you doing, my boy? You are my brother. I love you. You're very, my brother. I, I love you very much. Uh, I'm here to support you, but not like that. I don't want to support you like that. Anything you... but. What I'm saying is 100% true. It could be. It, it could very well be true. I believe you. I also don't want to support you in that endeavor. It's like talking about diaper rash for, for parents. I don't who, have a baby either. You want a baby? I'll get you a baby. I, you got a baby guy? I oh, Dude, I have multiple baby guys. But it's by bringing this up, we can all suffer together. We don't have to drown, as it were. I know I'm suffering. Okay. Yeah, you're just, you're just dragging us into the abyss with you is what's we going on. We used to be able to talk about anything, Tyler. Back in the day, if I brought up poop uke, you would talk about uh, pee-pee. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll put- That was a stretch. That was a bit of a stretch. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. Well, Ryan, I'm doing okay. <laughs> Admittedly, I've been better. I have been better. Yeah, I, I get it. Um, Oops. still, still on my, uh, on my health tip. Let's call it a health bender. Health bender. What do you think about that? That's pretty good. I like that. Tyler is 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 nose deep in exercise cocaine. Yeah. 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 God, I miss cocaine. Why you got some? Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, you know, I've been, I've been taking care of myself much better. I'm losing weight. I'm eating really healthy. You're doing great, man. Thanks, buddy. You're doing Thanks. great. And, and you're back to back to back to back. It's, it's, you seem to be getting past that, you know, what we talked about on last week's show that where it bottoms out and you're like, fuck it. You get back into it. That's very, uh-oh. Yeah, on. not quite the, not quite the, the, I appreciate you saying so, but, but, you, it's, but you've stayed strong. I have, yeah. and I'm still doing it. And the, and I will admit going to the gym is actually the easiest part for me. I can't believe I'm saying that out loud, but that actually happens to be the easiest part. As but opposed I, to what part? I, but I do feel that my drive to take care of my responsibilities is doing its best to dip back down. Yeah. And, and that voice in my head that it's like, dude, just play video games all day long is, is very, very strong. As I said last week, the, the honeymoon phase is over with my, the euphoria that comes with changing your lifestyle from very unhealthy to healthy. And now I'm in the grime, the, the trenches of fighting that, that feeling of, of telling me just, just take the day off. Don't worry about it. So uh, all I can do is try my best and I'm seeing mixed results, but overall I'm still very healthy. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a, an ongoing battle. It seems to me like or an at, ongoing conversation. I don't want to make it a battle. Even better. 
it seems to me like at the very least, you're upgrading your problems. Like, okay, yeah. playing video games all day, not super beneficial, but it's better than some of the other things that you and I have done in the past. Sure, yeah. You could do a lot worse, and, yeah. if, and if that's it hitting you hard, I feel like you're doing pretty damn good. Sure, and I'm not drinking every day anymore, which, God, I miss alcohol. Um, do you? I, I miss the not having to worry about anything or feeling like I'm not worried about anything in the moment. That, that, that shutting off phase, I really... I, I, I genuinely miss. I know it's. I, I understand what you mean. I know it's very unhealthy for me, and I know that if I was to go back to it, it would just put me back into that stupor, that very unhealthy, uh, that ruining my life stupor. But I do miss the worst the, kind of stupor. I, I do miss the bliss of of not caring about anything for those few hours while I was drinking. See, I think of that as more anticipation. And maybe we're in a different place with our drinking, but I don't get that anymore of just like, oh, I have a sip and now everything has gone to the to the wayside. I, I don't get that, but I do have that idea of maybe it's like smoking cigarettes. Man, I'm going to get out there and I'm going to smoke a cigarette and it's going to be so great. And then I'd smoke a cigarette and be like, this is not that great. Yeah. And when, that's, that's how I am with drinking. Well, now. for me, the drinking, I feel that way with drinking in a celebratory mode where I'm feeling really good while we're all getting together and then I'll have a drink we're like this is gonna pick me up and i'm like ah, i feel like shit yep. this is terrible yep. what i was talking about was going to the bar sitting alone i already feel like shit it's kind of difficult to dip from that point so the moment i start drinking beer it actually would pick me up so let me ask you something what can you do at this point even let's if we pretended like it wasn't even you what would you suggest to somebody who is going through the doldrums of self-improvement you have to change your schedule like i still have bad habits from that time. I'm not drinking, but the I, I need to restructure my day so as to take care of my responsibilities first. And then when I have my free time, jumping into all the fun stuff that I like to do, namely video games. And you made me think that you said going to the gym is the easy part. What if you put the gym at that time of day that you would normally go to the bar? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, and that's the thing is I've fallen into this habit and now going to the gym at that time has become so comfortable for me. Yeah. It becomes second nature. So just to change anything around right now, there is just that feeling of of dread. Like for some reason, like I'm normally pretty good with change. Like I don't have an issue with change, generally speaking, but now to change up my schedule, there is this feeling of like horror within me where mm. it's like, where it's like, don't, don't do it. You know, you have life fine right now, which... You know, it's better, but it's not great. Um, or it's not it's not where I want it to be, I should okay, say. Okay, that, that's better. Yeah. I I am I'm sorry to hear that, but also the fact that you have this awareness, I think is a pretty damn good thing, Tyler. Yeah, and I'm still doing well. You, you like are. I'm not I'm not miserable, but I'm just noticing these these things that are happening. So anyway. It's the stuff that you're using drinking to cover up. Yeah, exactly. You, you now have to deal with it. Exactly. Yeah. Did you know I'm gay? I do not accept that. <laughs> I do not accept that. <laughs> I think I'm going to drink. <laughs> uh, you should go to Flanagan's. It's oh, a great oh, really? bar. It's a great I bar. I want one of those fucking cups. I, I can recommend you some bartenders that'll hook you up. We call it Flannies, baby. Ryan, this week, I will say that I am at a neutral five. Spin that one, wheel, One, two, Tyler. three, four, five. Well, you're. it seems to me like you're headed in the right direction. Like we said last week, doing your best is obviously is often very boring and very uh you know monotonous monotonous is exactly right all right tyler gay it up i am at the end of my yoga teacher training in two weekends it's going to be all done it's going to be does so that mean we're never going to hear about it again <laughs> no, 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 no. My, my sweet little precious child. <laughs> I did not do all of this self-discovery and growth to not rub it in the faces of you plebeians. Because that's what growth is all about. I'm going to get some of those yogi beads. I'm really considering wearing those yogi, the mala beads around. I'm, I'm thinking about becoming- I will choke you to death with guy. them. I'm stronger than you because you of said death. yoga. Good luck. To death. Now, one thing that I have to say, and I, and I have- I've hinted at this before, perhaps I've even said it directly, but this yoga class, going in there with all these people, and, and obviously when you meet people in yoga, it's a specific type of person, but not only that, when you go into yoga teacher training, somebody who's not only willing to invest all this money, but all of this time, where they, I, I will give up my weekends from 12 to six both days to go do this, it's somebody who's very, very committed. Mm -hmm. 
it's a very particular type of person, right? Sure. This class has given me the confidence to be who I think I truly am. And what that is, is kind. I am in there and I am being just genuinely kind to people somewhere along the line. I don't know if it was school. I don't know if it was before that. I don't know if it was when I just got out of high school and I was dating a woman and she cheated on me with my best friend. That fucked me up in in relationships in a big way. Mm. I thought I can't be this kind person anymore. I can't be this, this who I think I truly am. And this class has given me the confidence to to be kind. When I go there, I am this version of myself that I really like. And I hope that I have the bravery to push forward with. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's what, it's what change is all about. It, do Positive you, change. Do you understand the idea of being kind to someone, being scary? Is that something that resonates with people? Oh, uh, I don't. I mean, I can't speak for anybody else. I know it does for me. Like, like expound on that. Uh, well, I mean, we've spoken about it in the past. Like when somebody drops something and instead of just immediately reaching down to pick it up for them, I start doing these equations in my head of like, okay, well I get there in time and if I do, oh, well it's a guy, do you think he's gonna be offended that another guy is helping him out? And by the time I've even finished a, a single thought, the person's already picked it yeah. up already. And I'm just sitting there like looking, thinking to myself like, well, that was stupid. The guy is back home yeah. watching TV and yeah. you're like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna pick it up. Mm-hmm. And and that's the thing. Like for me, it's not even like, will I make it in time? It's like, is this weird? Yeah. Is me connecting with this person weird? And these people that I've now known intimately, and I mean sex, Tyler. Oh, no, I don't mean sex. Good for you guys. Nah, none, none, of yeah. them, none of them will do it. Oh. I, I I know these people intimately. Not only are you with these people all the time, you're adjusting them and it is so personal. You're face to face with people and grabbing their hips and opening them up and all of that kind of stuff. I still have some of those thoughts of what I think normal people would just consider connecting with someone. For me, I don't know why. It's like, is this weird? Am mm. I being weird right now? I have such a strange thing with human relationships and connections. Thanks yeah. a lot, mom and dad. Yeah. So, yeah. so this class, and I hope to push it forward, has given me the confidence to just be kind to people and just be nice and put myself out there. And not that I have had no thoughts after I've done it, but but I, I've really, uh, I, I've really made myself proud. Good. That's awesome, man. It's Thank good you. that you're able to say it out loud in front of everybody. It's 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 hard for me to do it, but it's becoming easier and easier. Yeah. So I really appreciate it. I have, and, and you tell me if I'm right about this, what you're going through, I feel like I've already done some of it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm coming out the other end on, on it being hard to do or being boring. I'm really feeling good about the not drinking and, and what else is out there other than the way that I've been killing myself for the last 25 years. It's awesome. Thank you so much, Tyler. I appreciate it. This week I am at, I'm not feeling too great. I'm a little sick. My energy is way down. I'm at a four, baby. One, two, three, four. Well, F you. I'm nice, you stupid idiot. F you. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Four is lower than five, right? Uh, it depends upon whether you're standing on your head or not. Should we do... One more, or should we go to break? I think we should go to break first. And namaste. Oh, God. Hey, everyone. If you're anything like us, you struggle with depression, anxiety, isolation, or any number of things that hold you back in life. Or do you procrastinate a little too much? Maybe you've had trouble with self-control or even just going through a tough time. Regardless of whatever it is you're going through, therapy can help. For me, Ryan, it's completely changed the way I deal with my problems. Even the relationship with my own thoughts have improved dramatically. And that's why we're excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is so important to us because finding a therapist can be really hard, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you up to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. Go to betterhelp.com slash those guys or click on the link in the show's description. Clicking on that link not only supports us, but supports you. And we want to support you too by giving you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp to connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Finding the right therapist is so important. Someone that you really connect with. 
and BetterHelp has made that easier than ever. Switching therapists until you find the right one without having to worry about insurance or any additional fees. You know, Tyler, when I first had my son, I felt so many emotions that I had never experienced in my life. Therapy really helped me figure out what was going on. Well, that is betterhelp.com slash those guys. Help the show by supporting the people that help us. Those guys. What has he done? Can you tell me? Big Magic Johnson, what has he done? Well, yes, he he's a business person. He, uh, he's got AIDS. You hate. I mean, he, he made love to every girl in every city in, in America, and he had AIDS. And when he had those AIDS, I went to my synagogue and I prayed for him. I hoped he could live and be well. Those guys, those guys, those guys, those guys. Exactly, Tyler. <laughs> Nava's Day does not resonate with me. I don't. No. I don't like. I don't say. And it's fine. Everybody can say it. I, it's not for me. It's. It's said. It. It's been said so many times over the course of my life in a joking fashion that I think it's just been ironed into my head, stapled into my head that it's like this is. Ugh. I'll it's just. I'll just say bye. Cultural <laughs> appropriation. I don't know about that. Well, it is. I mean, it, it genuinely is. What What we think Namaste means, or the the God in me. Rep, not represents, but acknowledges the God in you mm. is not really what it means. Mm. Red circle. And we're back, baby. We were arguing over namaste. We weren't and... arguing. Ryan was just talking at me. Sure. Yeah, I appreciate you I was going to say to me, but it was just at me. I'm just saying in all the yoga and all these circles that I've traveled in, namaste just doesn't speak to me. It doesn't, nah. I don't get that same feeling. Or even at the end of a yoga class where everybody claps, that's just not for me. Like yeah. we just had a spiritual experience together. You don't need to do jazz hands. You know sure. what I mean? Sure. All right, Tyler, you Unless have, they feel like it. No, even then. Mm. Do what I want you to do. Yeah. That's what yoga is all about. Wow, gatekeeping yoga. I like your I like this little niche you found. Well, the problem is with yoga is that it's just too accessible for everybody. We need of to course. really make it we need a velvet rope. This is Miami. We need a VIP area in the yoga class. I would do all the opening of the hips and everything. It's just that dang yoga thing that happens afterwards that I don't want to be a part of. Oh no. I know. All right, Tyler. You have a segment where you show me an image. I react to it. We have a couple of chuckles, perhaps mm -hmm. a guffaw or two. Mm -hmm. It is called Drew Got Mail. That hurts my head. Beautiful. Ooh, I don't even have a headache, and I just hardcore metal banged my head and that hurt. I am I sitting in that. here in the studio with him. He did not move his head nary a once. You were looking at me, I swear I did. Oh, did you? Oh yeah, and I did it super hard. I'm embarrassed. Yeah, that, yeah. that one hurt. I called you out and I'm the liar. Mm -hmm. I just want to say before we move forward, Drucifer, beautiful work. Yes. Now, this one's a bit of a cheat because this should be a Tyler's Vault of Sound, but Tyler's Vault of Sound doesn't exist. Sure. So we get to play that awesome <laughs> Uh, uh, music right into the segment. Drew got mail. Yeah. Now it could be like voicemail. Sure. Drew got voicemail. I like it. Now, uh, Kirsty Alley Ryan. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe her most notable role was when she replaced Shelley Long on the show Cheers. Wrong. Look who's talking. <laughs> Do you really think so? What was that with no, John, no, no. John Travolta? I think. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Bruce Willis, I believe, is the voice. Oh, maybe. Uh, yeah. Uh, she she eventually won an Emmy for her role on Cheers. What one million percent which isn't a real thing you point out to me all the time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. her on Cheers with her Will They, Won't They with Ted Danson, classic. Mm. Love Cheers, man. Cheers be before my time, and I, I still very much love it. Yeah, I mean, those old shows, you know, that, Golden Girls, MASH, wow. All these different shows. I never watched MASH. Yeah. I mean, they are all they were all very well written. They didn't yeah. have special effects back then. You just had writing. Yeah. That was it. It was a worse time. Uh, well, a video has resurfaced online of Kirstie Alley. Have you seen this? I haven't, but I will say that after everything that we just discussed, here's the alley. Also, Weight Watchers, uh, big. She was someone not unlike Oprah, where her weight fluctuated over the years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. After all that, her most notable performance as being a kook. Yeah, yeah, a yes. kook. I, I believe a right wing kook. I could be wrong about that, but sure. I, I know a kook, a kook for sure. I know a kook when I see one. <laughs> Uh, in the mirror. Well, it's going viral right now uh, because she's, during an interview, she explains 
the night her parents died in a car crash. Happened back in the 80s. Okay. Or, or, the, or excuse me, the night her mother died in a car crash and her father got severely injured. That's not funny. No, that's not funny at that's all. not funny at all. Yeah, a, as I said, a, um, a, a car hit her parents' car as they were driving. It was a drunk driver that hit her parents. Mother died, severely wounded her father. Can you imagine? I mean, I, I won't ask you to, but man. I'm saying the most obvious thing in the world here. Talk about a life changer. Yeah. Talk about just like your foundation is crumbled. Mm -hmm. I don't care how old you are to lose your parents. And I know the dad survived, but in one night, I mean, that's devastating. Absolutely. Well, let's listen to a clip of this interview that she did. Cause this is resurfaced. This was, this was a long time ago. Okay. She gave an interview and she describes that night. And I would like you, you, the audience, you, Ryan, my co-host, I would like you to listen for the detail that stands out to you so the most. Are, are you putting me in a position where I now make fun of somebody who's talking about their dead parents, we are not, not unlike Bruce Wayne? We are not going to make fun okay. of her whatsoever. If you want to make fun of her, you can make fun of her for back in the 80s. She went to L.A. originally to look for Scientology. Oh, yeah. Scientology didn't look for her. She went seeking Scientology. I didn't land on Plymouth Rock. <laughs> yeah, Scientology. And, and if you want to be a Scientologist, good on you. No, I'm not good on you. I mean, I respect your right to do what makes you happy, but you're also a fucking kook. Scientology is like pretty much evil as long as David Miscavige has uh, been there at the top. He is a rat bastard. But what about people who say that about, uh, you know, uh, Christianity with with the popes and the- I believe the, he is Catholicism. And the boy touching and whatnot. I believe they're evil as well. Okay. Yes. You so, can you could be a Catholic and not be evil, but well, you also have to acknowledge that the people at the top of your religion are evil. I think that's fair, but isn't that true about Scientology as well? Why are you making me defend Scientology, Tyler? I'm not, you do this all the time. But it's what I'm saying is right. Okay, we, you're right. This is You can believe whatever you want. But be, but be nice while doing it. Exactly. Yeah, you can, and, be, and you don't can be a nice Scientologist. Of course you can. Okay. Of course you can. Just making sure. Yeah, but yeah. You, you're the one who started with She's a Kook. You started with that. Well, I wasn't talking about Scientology. No, but it's I, part of I, it. I think that she lost some of her faculties as celebrity took hold of her. And I'm sure this thing with her parents didn't help. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so let's listen. Here we go. Got there and my sister and I, we were all sitting in this waiting room and we were sobbing. And as I'm crying, I said, my sister's here and I wasn't looking at her, but I said, where were they going? And she said, to a Halloween party. And I said, what were they dressed as? Why would you ask this? Why would you? And she said, the odd couple. And I said, oh, and I'm thinking, what odd couple? Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon? Well, what were their costumes exactly? She said, mom was a black girl and dad was a Ku Klux Klan member. Now, what detail stood out to you the most in that story? Was it Don Lemon? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. You're zagging. I need you to zig. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I want to know before I answer she, your question. She was talking to Barbara Walters, by the way. She was doing an interview <laughs> with Barbara fucking Walters. <laughs> <laughs> You're wascally wabbit. Um, what party were they going to? A Halloween one, apparently. What, like, where was this going to be acceptable? And, and could you imagine being the EMTs working on these people? Yeah. 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 You're like giving mouth to mouth to uh, somebody in blackface. Or somebody dressed as a Ku Klux Klan member. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was blackface, blackface and a KKK member. I, I am not proud of what I am about to say. And it's probably going to come off poorly. As I listen to that, my genuine feeling as she was saying all that is, this isn't true. That would be your question when you find out that your parents died. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Hmm. That well, well, shock can do crazy things to people. Okay. Like when people are in shock, they can act in many different you're, types of ways. You're totally right. And I am opening myself up to the idea that I'm totally wrong about this. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I have no idea. That was just my initial thought is this is a lie. My thought process is why would you admit this? That's what I mean. I think if this happened to somebody in real life, you would hide this. Well, not everybody. I, well, I'm not here to 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 discuss the merits of whether she's telling the truth hey, or wait not. Wait a minute, Christy Alley is a, is mulatto? That doesn't sound right. 
First of all, it's Kirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That seems like the important correction. I think we got that uh, good and good. And that yeah. is Drew Fair yeah. Mail. Yeah. <laughs> That, that kind of brought the show to a halt, but in kind of a fun yeah, way. We have fun here, don't we? At least I didn't say African. <laughs> that was actually better, to Is be it? honest with you. I, yeah. Am I allowed to say that, or are we going to have to edit that out? No, no, because okay. it's not true. Her parents are, I assume, white. She was just dressed in blackface. That doesn't make you half black. I'm still worried about it. I think I'm going to have us edit that out. Great, great. So much editing because Ryan doesn't know how to choose his words. I do, I do, but uh-huh. it's just like, uh, who was it who just recently said, you know that you have a real best friend that if your text messages were to get leaked, you would lose your job. Mm-hmm. Like, I just talked to you. I know we could say whatever because you know I'm a good man and I could say African and it's not offensive because I love our black constituency and our white constituency. But you know the millions of people that listen to this don't know you the way that I That's do. the issue. Yeah. There and lies the rub, yeah. Tyler. Yeah. Tyler, what is guy code? Uh, guy code, another word for uh, uh, bro code, sure. uh, man code, all that stuff. It's basically where you just, uh, without words, know how to support your fellow man. Right. Or well, is it to support your fellow man or there's like do's and don'ts? Like we well, do. We that's d- it. You back him up. It's a, it's a guide. It's a guide. It's a, uh, unwritten rules. Unwritten is that's, a, that's a key element is yeah. that it's not written down. It's something we just all understand. Yeah. It's like if, uh, if your buddy's girlfriend calls you and like, was, was Jim hanging out with you last night? You're like, absolutely. Jim and I were hanging out all night last He's night. He's here with me right now. And they're like, <laughs> I'm actually with him. Nope. <laughs> No, nope. that can't be possible, Barbara. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> but okay, so it's this idea of like we're men, we do this and we don't do this. Yeah. Okay. When is it appropriate to break guy code? It's, it's almost like the unwritten rules of baseball. Sometimes you've just, it, and by that I mean some of them are stupid. And like sometimes they're just not working and you need to do something else. What do you think about that? Well, for me, it's whenever they, if they're going to throw me under the bus, it's kind of the same way that I feel about ratting people out. If somebody's doing something wrong, as, I mean, as long as you're not like murdering or raping yeah, somebody. As long as you're not hurting somebody directly. Yeah, if you're doing something wrong and it doesn't affect me, I'm keeping my mouth shut. I, I'm not a rat. Like I'm not going to tell on you. If you're doing something that is directly affecting me, like if you're stealing from me, I so am fucking telling on you. Or or someone else. If you're yeah. like doing something that's directly affecting someone else, Absolutely. I will also tell on you. Yep. Okay, let me ask you about this. Tell people, for all the women out there, because guys already know this, what is the urinal bro code? Well, you always, as long as there's room, you always have to skip one urinal that's next to the person already using it and then use the one. There's always one urinal in between you and the other person. Do not share a urinal. That goes without saying. Share. Do, what? You don't be next to each other. Or both, really, right? Why? Well, I, yeah, yeah, I, I don't understand why you would even need to say that other one. <laughs> well, that's, that's not the, a usual thing. That's the problem is that there's so many unwritten rules. Let's write some of these down. Yeah. Don't share a urinal. I guess we're starting with the most obvious. Uh. (laughs) We're starting with the foundational and then work our way up. Uh Now, here's my question. Am I allowed to break guy code if somebody, because of where they are stationed, if you take the middle urinal, now you're forcing me into the tiny urinal for kids where I don't know geometry apparently well enough. I cannot use that thing without getting a pee mist on my shins, okay? Yeah. Are you familiar with of course. With, with firing down? Yeah, it's not physics. It's your your the stream is coming out so strong in the urinal so far away that there is no proper there, angle. It does uh, Isaac Newton get in here and fix this. The only problem I mean? with what you're saying is how do you know that he didn't go by bro code and there was somebody at the other urinal to his right. That's smart. And and he, they had left before you walked into the bathroom. That's like when you pull up to a gas station and somebody was already in the one that you drive mm-hmm. forward to and so they take the back one and then that first person leaves and you're like, what an asshole. Yeah. Why would you do this? Yeah, or the ATM at the bank where there's two right in front of each other and they... They take the one closest oh. to them, and there's a there's a fresh one right up front. Yeah. Like, dude, let me get in here. Or when somebody farts in an elevator and takes off. That's fun to do. Sorry about that, by the way. <laughs> um, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is, can I then pull up next to this person or even share 
Uh, so I don't have to get pee all over my shins. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's so you don't use the baby urinal. Okay. That's yeah, definitely. That's a decision. We just made a decision. Yeah, that that's a tough one, but I would say it's a gray area, and you're you're allowed. Okay, for sure. Cool. I'm yeah. going back to that truck stop tonight, and I'm putting this into action. Good. All right, Good. Tyler. Let's you know the hole goes in the stall wall, right? It doesn't go into the urinal. Oh, all of a sudden you're mayor of the truck stop, <laughs> Tyler. Lounge, you're, lounge you're, mayor, you're mayor of Glory Town. I get it. Sorry, uh, I just totally talked all over you right there. We I did apologize. it to each other. No big deal, yeah. Tyler. It's not a glory we're, hole. It's the whole glory. We, we have a bad habit of doing that to one another. I think this one has been a little bit more even. I think we've been yes. more paced. We just, we both were excited about the glory hole jokes. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever experimented with a glory <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, excuse me. I want to know who's touching my pee pee. Not me, man. <laughs> Just as long as it's not me again. You know what I mean? It's getting sad. It was me the whole time. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I told you the show was going to get better. I can only jerk off with a glory hole situation because I'm embarrassed of my physical appearance. So you have three holes, one for your wiener and the other two for your hands so you can wanna... reach through it? <laughs> You're basically hugging the stall wall. <laughs> I need to make one for my face because I just can't breathe. All right, I'm going to design this. I'm going to write this up. All right, before we do that, Tyler, let me see. Let me make sure. Should we take a break or one more? I, I've, it would be 15 minutes each segment, uh, each part. So breaking it? Uh, so yeah, let's break. Let's break. We can break. Breaking it, and then we come back with a hear ye, hear ye that for Tyler is going to be devastating. Oh, no.